thank you for joining me today on Krista So Crafty. I really appreciate you being here. Today we're going to be making an apron. So, oh my goodness, probably a couple years ago now, because I've used this pattern a couple times, I found this pattern at a garage sale. So it's a McCall's pattern. Um, the number is 6214. Uh, there's a stamp on here that said it was, got it purchased at Fabricland. But it makes some really cute little aprons and so i'm going to make let's see if i can find it this one here for a young guy young man who likes to do art and loves to cook in the kitchen and so i'm going to make him an apron now his grandma who's asked me to make it for him we kind of talked and we came up with some material i have some mutant ninja turtle material now this is, I'm going to guess it's like vintage material. This is old, old material that, again, I got from a sale. And then I'm also going to use this here. It's Batman, Catwoman material, the penguin. Um, yeah, I just thought it was kind of cool. So I'm going to do a double-sided apron. And that way, depending on his mood, he can decide to be a mutant ninja turtle warrior, or he can be a cat one one bat one batman the penguin kind of warrior. His choice. So, and then I'm going to use black as the accent for the for the pockets and for the ties. So, anyways, I thought I'd bring you along. So let's get going. So to make this apron, I'm going to use pattern piece number two and pattern piece number three. That's for the lower pocket and for the apron, A, B, or C. Now, it does have a spot here for a pocket up top, but I'm not gonna put that one there. I'm just gonna put the middle pocket and then I'm going to sew it in the middle or I don't know, see here it shows you to have three small pockets. I might just sew down the middle so there's two bigger pockets. That way, you know, he can get his toys in there, or whatever it is he needs in there, his paintbrushes, his whatever. So, okay, let's keep going. For the straps for the apron, so the ties are gonna sew on here and here. And so what I'm going to do is, I'm just gonna cut my material two and a half inches wide by the width of material. And that'll give me enough for to tie around his waist as well as the neck strap. So that's what I'm going to do now. Now that the straps are cut into two and a half inch strips, I'm going to press them and make sure they're nice and flat. And then I'm going to just fold it over in half and give it a press and do this for all the straps. This is the same procedure for all the straps. And then from there, I'm going to take and open it up and fold each side into the center line and then fold it again. And this will create a nice little strap that we can use. The other thing I do is on the end of one end of each strap I'm going to fold over probably about a quarter to a half inch and fold that into the strap so that it has a nice neat end um, for when we go to sew it onto the aprons. And then now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew across the end and I'm going to sew down each side to close up the um, strap so that it's nice and secure. And I do always start on the end where the where it's folded um, yeah, and so that's what, that's what I'm doing here now. Oh my goodness, who can agree with me? Nothing worse than sewing along and thinking you're doing such a great job, and then you realize you ran out of bobbin thread. Most annoying. <laughs> Check your bobbins, make sure you have enough thread before you start your project. 
It's a good piece of advice that I should take. <laughs> So now what we need to do is make the pocket. So we have our material and I'm going to put a half inch seam all the way around here. And on, on one of the long edges, I'm going to do a half inch twice just to make the nice edge. And then I'll take that to the machine and sew across there. I'm gonna leave this edge with no um, seam on it. We will sew this onto the apron and it'll make its own kind of edge there so we're just going to worry about the sides the two sides and the one and the top and so how i'm going to do that is i have my little ruler here and i'm going to set it to the half inch now you can you can guess too but i just thought you know what i have this so let's use it and it just makes everything more consistent so i'm going to start here and just use my little ruler and make sure that that's all half an inch, like so. And this is the edge that I'm gonna fold over twice to make the hem, the edge, so that it's nice and neat where he's gonna put his hands into his apron pocket. Okay, so now all I need to do is now that that's there, I can just fold this over. And when I fold it over, I'm going to fold it to that line. We'll give it another good press. It's hot. Imagine that. And we'll just press that down and give that a good press. And now I'm just gonna turn it and I'm gonna open this back up again because those crease lines are there so I'll be able to find them again. I'm gonna fold this over a half inch. I mean, I could have done this one first, but I didn't. So I'm going to iron that to a half inch, give it a good press. And then I'm just going to refold this on the crease lines for the top. And it's probably not gonna wanna lay down, but that's okay. It will once we get to the sewing machine and to the material, we can get it to lay down. Okay, that's that one side. We'll turn it around and do the exact same thing on the other side. Fold it down for a half inch. Make sure you get that out of the way. Although the ruler is metal, this little red thing is plastic, so. You don't want to hit that with your iron and make a mess. So give that a good press. And I'm bad at doing that with my iron, leaving it down with the iron side down, but I don't do it when I'm not ironing, so. Oopsie, I was gonna do that the wrong way. It goes this way. Oh my goodness, that is hot. All right, so now meet me over at the sewing machine and we're going to stitch along here and then we will attach this onto the apron. 
All right, so it's very bad lighting here, so I do apologize, but what I'm doing, so this is the edge that we folded over twice. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna stitch close to the edge all the way across just to secure that down. So just do this and make sure that you're doing a back stitch at the beginning and at the end just to secure those stitches. Okay, so hold that down straight and let's go. And now we have a nice neat edge across the top here. So now what we need to do is to take this to our apron piece and I'll show you how we're gonna attach it. Okay, so this is our apron piece and we need this pattern piece so we know where to sew it, the pocket on to the apron. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna open up my material that which I've already cut out. I didn't think you needed to see me cutting that out. But, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up on one side one side of the apron of the material that we've cut out. And that will give us a spot where we can now take our pocket and sew it onto here. You want to make sure that the side that you've sewn with the edge, with the nice edge, you want it to be face down and that the edges where we only fold it over once, you want those face up at this time. So what I do is I take and I and I don't know if this is the right way or wrong way, but this is how I do it. First of all, I'm going to find the center. So I'm just going to fold this over. And I'm going to put a pin here. So I know where the center of the pocket is. Whoops, I need to turn that over. I'm just going to put that all the way through. There we go. So what I like to do is take and line that pin up with this fold line. This is the center fold of for the pattern and move it up approximately half an inch because that's the seam that I'm going to sew across the bottom to make sure that I catch everything. I'm going to put a pin there and get my fingers on that pin and I'm going to pull the pattern piece out Make sure that this stays nice and straight across here and put that pin back in. And so now I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew about a half an inch away from the edge of the material across here. And then we're going to flip it up and we'll have our pocket. So just one second. Actually, I wanted to show you, point out something. So at the beginning of the video, I told you that I purchased this pattern from a garage sale. Um, a McCall's pattern 6214. Well, the person who had it before me had gone through and cut all the pattern pieces and put them into their corresponding envelopes. So this is for child apron ABC, for, for the bib D, youth boy girl. So that was so handy. I, I, I just like to pat her on the back because that is amazing. So now that I'm done with these pieces, so this is the this is the envelope for this apron that I'm doing. So I'm going to take the pocket and I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to fold this up and put it back in here again so that the next time I go to use this pattern, all I have to do is grab this out, bada boom, bada bing, and I can make the apron. Very cool. I'll be right All right, so now that this is sewn on, I'm just going to clip my thread here and get rid of that little straggler. And now I'm going to take it over to the ironing board. And I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my material and flip it up. And now I have this pocket attached nicely to the bottom here. And so I'm going to go and give that a good press to make sure that it's all up away from the sew line and it's going to look, be a nice little pocket. Okay, I have that pressed nice and flat. Now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to start either on either side, it doesn't matter, but I'm going to go sew down here, across here, and up across here. And I'm actually going to 
do a reverse at the beginning and the end to make sure that these ends, edges, are sewn down good. That's called a stress point. So as they're putting their hands in or their toys or their whatever in, it's you would need to make sure that that's sewn down good so it doesn't come apart. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to sew a center line. On the pattern, like I said, it does show two, line, two sew lines, but I think I'm just gonna do one right down the center, which will give this a little bit more uh, larger pocket for whatever they need in their pocket. So how I'm going to do that simply is just to take the apron and fold it over so that the edges of the um, pocket meet. And I'm just gonna create a center crease, just like so. And I'm sure on the pattern it might say to do something a little different, but this is what I'm gonna do. I'm loosely using the pattern to make this apron. Give that a good finger press. No need to take it to the iron. So now I'm hoping you can see, there's a center crease right there. I can see it. So I'm gonna bring in a couple pins and what I like to do is turn it this way because I like to start at the top is to have a straight pin, not a crooked one, and put a pin in the center at the top and down on the bottom. I have to turn it so I can find the center crease. So now while I'm going sewing, I will follow that center crease line. Again, I'm gonna do a back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Let's get this in the center. Now, you do not wanna sew over your pin. So once I get my needle down from my machine, onto the center line. I'm gonna take this pin out so that I'm not sewing over it. Last thing I wanna do is break my needle. I like to sew down to that line that we stitched earlier and then that use that as my kind of guide. So I go back and forth a few times there just to make sure that that center is gonna stay because again, that is a very much a, a pressure point a where when they're putting stuff in and out, that's where it's gonna rip. So make sure that that's sewn really good there. Get that and then sew right down. As I'm coming to my needle, I'm just going to pull it back a bit. I can kind of see that line, so I'm just using this as a guide. Pull that out and again do a back stitch. And there we have our little pockets one there and one there. So I'm going to clip some threads and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now our next step is to take the ties that we made earlier and attach them onto the four spots onto the apron. So you want to make sure that you grab your ties and the side where we folded it over and, and made a nice edge. We want to make sure that those are going to be on the outside. So two of these are going to be for the top and the other two will be for the side straps. So I'm gonna take these two pieces, well, let's work with one at a time. I'm gonna take my piece that's all folded over nicely and I'm gonna put it away from the edge of my material. And all I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my strap, put a pin over here, I'm gonna take my strap and I'm going to attach it approximately a half an inch from the corner of the underarm here. So I'm just gonna put a pin in here to hold that in place. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna find my folded edge, our nice neat edge. I'm gonna take the opposite end that has the raw edge and I'm gonna attach it to the other side of the apron. Just in here, like so. Again, about a half an inch down from the corner. The reason being is, so how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to put two pieces, two apron pieces together and sew all the way around, leaving an opening on the bottom so that we can flip it. In the instructions, I wanted to show you this, it's only using one piece of material so it's only gonna be a one-sided apron. I'm making a double-sided apron so that they can choose which side they want. So in the case of the 
apron where you only have the one side, you attach the, let me see if I can show you here. You attach the, um, they use twill tape, whichever. You attach the pieces like I'm showing you, but you're going to stitch them and then you're gonna fold over, roll over the edges of the material to make a nice casing. But with us, like I said, I'm going to use two so that this apron can be flipped. So now that we have the two side pieces, what I like to do is just kind of get them out of the way. So point them down, get them away. And we're gonna find our material, sorry, our straps, our two good edges. We're gonna find the raw edges and we're gonna attach these onto here using the same method. I'm gonna go about a half an inch from the edge of the material and just pin that in place. And do the same thing on this side. If you wanna measure it by all means, you can absolutely do that. I'm just gonna approximate it. So now that we have all these in place, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch over these, all four of these, to make sure that they're tacked down and then I don't have to worry about having pins inside when I put this together. So let's go do that. And I'm just doing a real basic straight stitch across all of these. So I'm gonna get this lined up and I'm gonna to try to go probably about an eighth to a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the material. Okay, so about there. Whoops, get my thread underneath here. There we go. So about there. I quite often use my presser foot as a guide. So in this instance, I'm lining the edge of the material up with the edge of this in this hole here. That's how I do it. Somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch will be great. So I just started that. I'm gonna take my pin out and I'm gonna backstitch over that just to give it a little added security. And I'm gonna repeat that for all four of these. Right, we are making some good progress. So those are all stitched down, tacked down. And what I'm going to do before I start pinning this together is I'm gonna gather all four of these straps <laughs> and I'm going to put them in the pockets so that they're out of the way and they're not gonna get in any of our seams and accidentally get sewn because we don't want to have to pick anything out. So let's just tuck these in the pocket. Once they're in there, then just pull on it so you have enough material so it's lying down straight. We'll do this side. And then this, this pocket. Now you can pin them down, you can whichever, but just get them out of the way so that you're not gonna be stitching them. All right. And there we go. Now, I've gone ahead off camera and I have made our other apron piece, okay? So it has the pocket. This one's not gonna have any straps on it, obviously, because they're on the other side. So all I'm going to do is take this and I'm gonna turn it over and I'm just gonna match everything up, okay? So let's do this. Get the strings on the outside because then that way they will be on the inside. Trim them up if you want. Sorry, you it was off. Awesome. I'm all I'm doing is just lining this up across here. And because we use the pattern piece, these should match up beautifully. And I'm just gonna go around and pin this in place. So what I like to do is start on the corners and make sure that those line up really nice. And get the pin in there and don't poke yourself. And give that a little shake down, make sure everything is lined up nice, and then just continue. Now you can use clips if you have them, by all means. Um, I'm just gonna use my pins. Now, the thing to remember is once you get down to the bottom here, very important, and make sure that your material is right sides together so your pockets should be touching, okay? The thing you want to remember is when you get down to the bottom, you need to leave an opening probably four to six inches, okay? 
something like that, about that much, so that you can pull your apron through, and then we will finish this up afterwards, but make sure you leave that opening. I'm just gonna continue on. All right, I have it all pinned together and I'm gonna start sewing. Now what I do, just to help remind me, is where I'm going to stop, I put two pins in. So that once I get all the way around, I don't just keep going and sew the opening closed. So I put two pins in as just a reminder for myself, that's what I do. So I'm going to start on this spot and I'm going to do about a half an inch. I'm going to take and line the edge of the material with the edge of my presser foot. And that's how I'm gonna go ahead and sew this. So I see my thread is come undone. So one moment, please. Quick fix. And let's get going. So I'm gonna pull that pin out. And again, I'm going to do, sorry, you can't see. I'm going to do a back stitch at the beginning and, and at the end, and sew all the way around. When you come to these rounded corners, what I like to do is just take my hand and kind of rotate it onto the material. And then as I'm pressing on the presser foot and I'm sewing, and I'm gonna go slow, I'm not gonna go real fast, I'm using my hand to rotate the material and it will make a nice clean corner, a rounded corner, just like this. So just go nice and easy, just nice and slow. Make sure you take out your pins. Let's see, I'm just using my hand to, to turn the material, just like that. And then you can continue on sewing how you were before. When you come to the corners at the armpit and at the top of the neck there, I like to go over the strap piece a couple times just to make sure that that's going to stay in there. Again, it's going to be a place where there's a lot of uh, pulling and tugging on it, so you don't want that to come out. Okay, and then I'm going to continue around. And we're going to do the same thing on the inside curve here as I'm using my hand and I'm just gently moving it so that it can follow the curve of the armpit. You don't want to pull. I'm not pulling on this to make it go because that'll make it ripple. So you just want to guide it, the material, to follow along where the, where the presser foot is. Just like that. It's very important too to make sure that those straps that are on the inside aren't up anywhere near where you're sewing. So you can reach your hand in and kind of move it out of the way if you need to. Make sure it's not in the sewing line. You don't want to catch it with your thread. Coming up to our two pins here. So I'm just going to take both of them out and do a back stitch. All right. All right, so now what I like to do, and it's usually recommended, is to take a pair of scissors or a pair of pinking shears, whichever you have, and we're just gonna make some relief cuts in the arm, in the curve. This will allow the material to lay down nicer, so it'll lay down flat without a bunch of bulk in there. Okay, so I'm just clipping, but I'm not clipping the, th the stitching. Make sure you don't do that or you're gonna have to go back and sew it. So I'm just gonna do this with both sides. I'll be right back. The other place where I'm gonna put some relief cuts is down on the bottom on the curve. Just again, the same thing, just going to make some little relief cuts in here so it will lay down nicely. Okay, do that on both sides. All right, so now that we have everything sewn together, we've got all our curves clipped. Now it's time to pull everything out through the hole that we left on the bottom of the apron. So that's right here on mine. But first what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this over to this ironing board and I'm going to press these seams back. Now this will be very helpful at the next step when we have to sew it together. So I'm gonna take this over and I'm gonna press them both back like this so it makes a nice flat edge 
and it'll make it sewing it together that much easier. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this out here, like so. Get my iron over here, but I'm going to press this back right along this seam line so it makes a nice edge like that. So we'll bring in the iron and just press that down like that. My iron is still trying to heat up a bit. We'll give it a second. Okay, hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Like that. Try that again, give it a good press. And then I'm just going to take and flip this over like this. We'll cut that thread off in a minute. Make sure it's laying down nice. And I'm gonna fold this over the other way so that when we go and flip this out, it will be nice and neat and our edges will match and it will just look very professional. Okay, so just like this, just like that. Okay, it's going to, sometimes you need three hands. There we go. Give that a good press. So now it's all nice and neat. Where are you at? See, it's nice and neat. And when we go to sew it together, the edges are gonna be really nice. All right, so now comes the time to flip it inside out. So what I do is I open the opening up and just reach in and I go all the way up to the top and I'm just gonna pull all of this through. And we will poke out those corners and get it all nice and neat in just a minute. But for right now, let's just pull everything through. Okay, so now that I've got everything through, I'm going to take my hand. You can take a tool. Uh, I don't know. It's not recommended to pair of scissors, that's for sure. But you want something that you can poke at these corners with. Make sure that it's nice and neat. Okay. And as you're doing this, you're basically you're inspecting it as while you're doing this to make sure that you got everything sewn. So get these straps out of the way, like that. Get these poked out. This is the neck straps. And this one. And get the side strap out and make sure your material is all laid out nice. So at this point, you can lay it all out and what I like to do is just to make sure that everything is all laid out nice. If I need to, I can take a chopstick, works really well, inside, and just run that chopstick all along that sewing line, like this, just to make sure that everything is laid out nice. Get into those corners. Okay, I'm just, I my chopstick is right here and I'm just gonna run it along that curve. What that does is it just helps it to lay down nicely. And so then when we go to stitch all the way around the edge, everything's gonna look nice and we're gonna have a beautiful finish on our apron. So just going around here and I want to show you, oops, get that out of there. I want to show you this bottom edge here. Oops, I got some threads. Let's get those trimmed up here. Perfect. Having threads on the inside is one thing, but not on the outside. We want to trim those up. So that edge that we pressed down, I want to show you how nice it looks. See how beautiful that looks when we lay it together. We can pop a pin or two in here just to help that make sure that it stays where we want it and our edges are nicely lined up. But because we pressed it, it makes this step so much easier. So much easier. So I'm just going all the way to the end there where the edge is, where we stopped and started our sewing. And I'm just getting those pins in there just to make sure that everything looks Beautiful. 
and I'm going to put one more right there. Now, the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to the ironing board, and I'm going to be careful I don't hit my pins because these are plastic. And I'm just going to press this down, making sure that it's laying down really nice. I'll be right back. All right, have this all nicely pressed. It looks nice and clean on all the edges. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start stitching here about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the material. And I'm going to stitch all the way around. What's that going to do? That is going to make our edges stay together nice and neat. It's going to have it nice and laid down. And at the same time, it's going to close up this bottom edge where we had left it open to turn it. So that's what our next step is. And I always like to start right where the opening is. So I'm going to start my sewing just before my pins, okay? Put my needle down, make sure I have it the way I want it. Again, make sure that your straps are out of the way. You don't want to sew them into anything right now. And I'm going to pull that pin out and put my finger there and hold that. And I'm going to do a back stitch. And away we go. Make sure you pull your pins out as you go. And I'm just getting this all nice and neat here. And again, when you come to the curve, use that same method as we did before. Hold your hand here and just kind of guide it as it goes around and we'll be done in no time at all. Coming to the end here, we're just gonna do a little back stitch and we are done friends. So now our next step is just to clip our little threads here, get them out of the way. And we are all done. Look at that. See, we stitched all the way around. And again, as we are stitching around, we went over the ties and give them another stitch. There's a thread hanging out there. So those are all nice and secure and our apron is all done. And there is our finished apron. So there's the Mutant Ninja Turtle side. That's so cute. And then we flip it over and we have our Joker. The Is it the Joker? No, not the Joker. The Penguin, Batman, Catwoman with our pockets and our ties. I think it turned out so cute. So, so cute. I think he's going to absolutely love it. Each side has its own little pockets. It's got the ties. And you know, the nice thing about this is it will, it will grow with him. So if it is a little big, it might be a little bit big for him. He's not a real huge boy, but you know what? I think he's going to love it. And I think he's going to enjoy it cooking and crafting with his grandma, with his mom and with his brother. So I hope he's going to love it. I hope that this was a useful tutorial for you. I know I didn't follow the pattern exactly for the McCall's pattern. However, you know, this is to show you too that you can adapt things. You can use it as a basis and to continue on from there. So if you enjoyed this type of content, please give me a thumbs up down below. And I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and click that little bell so that when I upload new videos, you will see those right away and you won't miss any of my content. I do lots of different content. I do sewing, cricket stuff, all different kinds of crafts, painting, you name it. So thank you again for joining me today and happy crafting. Mm -hmm.